right now he would be he'd be up in his room with just books and books of uh, Irish jokes and notes from like 40 years of uh, being master of ceremony in different places. He's appointed the books. He said, Jimmy, people give me these books every year. He says, there's not a joke in one of them. <laughs> not a real joke in one of them. <laughs> well, anyways, when he passed away a few years ago, uh, I wanted to think of a way to keep some of his stories going. And uh, so I wrote Big Old City, and then a little bit later I wrote this song, which takes about eight or ten of his stories um, and puts each one of them in a different verse. So I'll, I'll tell you because it goes kind of fast. Um, <clears throat> a couple of the verses. Uh, he lived in uh, Dillon's Block in Holyoke, Massachusetts. Um, and one day is, you know, he had a paper out, and his mother would tell him every time he got paid to take a dollar out of his pay and take it down to Dr. Hand, who was the obstetrician, well-named obstetrician, Dr. Hand. That's <laughs> all he could do was catch back then. Nothing much to it, really. And um, after six or seven months of doing this, one day Dr. Hand looked at me and said, Billy, he says, You're, you don't have to come back anymore. He says, why that? He says, you're paid up. He says, what do you mean? He says, well, you've been paying for your delivery all these months. <laughs> And then there's a, a, a story, uh, you know, he, she, my mother was, grandmother would send him down to the grocer and she'd have a long list of stuff and not a nickel to pay the guy with, right? And at the end, he would just say to the grocer, um, my mother says that she'll, she'll pay you on Saturday when my father gets paid. And could I have a few of those candies behind the counter? <laughs> and uh, there's another verse um, about his brother, who was a, a really a, a Skid Row bum back in the days, uh, from a very, very young, young age. There's a little verse about running into him. And another verse about two brothers, a, a true story. They used to cross the trestle um, <clears throat> just for something to do and to collect firewood down the other side. And it was a trestle that was uh, the trains would go over. There were two brothers. One of them would be, you know, what we'd say nowadays, developmentally delayed, and, the, and his brother would take him for, for walk over the trestle. And sure enough, a train came, and the, the, the kid who was a little delayed uh, jumped into the river. And the other brother stood there and, went, and was hit by the train. And the Irish mothers would say, see, God takes care of his special ones. Well, what about the other kid? I mean, it was, it was just, I never understood that as a kid. And then the last one, there's a couple more in there, but there was a lady, uh, Mrs. Patton, her name was. And anybody ever read any books by Tracy Kidder? Tracy? Yes. Or yes. Well, <laughs> the book Hometown is about Northampton, Mass. Uh, my brother Tommy is the cop in that book, the kind of the main character in that book. But there's another book he wrote called Among School Children. And the teacher is a, is a Patton, and it was her, her grandmother that this, this story is about. Mrs. Patton used to, um, as my father said, had long, long blonde hair, like Rapunzel, it sounded like, you know. <laughs> And uh, every Saturday, she would wash her hair in the tenement and throw it out over the balcony and let it wave in the wind to dry. Now, one this particular Saturday, um, <clears throat> my father got up and he had to go to the bathroom. There's only one bathroom on the floor. And he said, well, there's a line there. So he said, the heck with it. He snuck out onto the balcony. And once you know, a direct hit right at Mrs. Patton's head because <laughs> she was hanging out her hair. Well, maybe I've said too much about it. Let me play this one. <laughs>